Is it because of that drone, or whatever you call it? No, it's not because of the drone. It's just a thing, a tool. I moved because you left me emotionally weeks or even months ago. I'm just giving you the freedom you seem to want and moving on with my life. You're seeing someone else, aren't you? I couldn't help but laugh. Are you serious? I've never even thought about anyone else since I met you. Maybe I should ask if you've been as faithful, but I'm not sure you can be honest about it. There was a tense silence. Sarah was probably trying to figure out how much I knew. That's what I thought, I said. Sean, I always. Stop it right now, I interrupted. Don't you dare say you've always loved me or been faithful. I'm done with this. You can't leave me. We've been married for 20 years. We have a grown son. Her voice was on the verge of sobs. We can meet later this week, or over the weekend to talk about what to do next. I don't want to do this over the phone. We both deserve better. I'll call you in a few days, but you can start looking for a lawyer. I ended the call and went to the trailer to start marinating two thick pork chops in soy sauce and herbs, getting them ready for the grill when Stephanie arrived. Having done that, I read the next few chapters of Dan Brown's Origin, the fifth book in the Robert Langdon series, while listening to The Water Below. I was lighting the grill when Stephanie arrived. This time she came out of her car with a package of beer, wearing yoga pants and an oversized blouse. I noticed how the blouse, though clearly too big for her small frame, seemed to hint at some insecurity. Still, she looked great to me. She smiled at me. Hey, I'll be right back. She went into the trailer and came out a few minutes later, still smiling and holding two bottles of beer. She handed me one. I took a sip and said, I hope you don't think I drink every day or use alcohol to handle stress. I actually drink very little beer, but I appreciate your choice. You've managed to pick two of my three favorite beers. I'm not a big drinker either, Stephanie said, looking at her bottle. I like wine more than beer. But you mentioned you like beer last night, so I thought it'd be nice if I brought some. Are you still going to feed me? Of course, I said, noticing the slightly worried look on her face. Sure, here's a simplified and adjusted version of your provided text. I'm glad you remembered what I said. Thank you. I'm happy to share dinner with you. It's been a long time since I've had company like this. Her real smile made me feel good. Now, about that favor you mentioned. Have you talked to your wife tonight? Yes, I called her right after we spoke earlier. Are you planning to fix your relationship? No, that's not an option for me. Why not? You were married for many years, right? Yes, but I can't see us getting back together. You can get through this and be happy again. I looked at her, confused. I didn't understand why she was trying to get us back together. Sarah, my wife, never mentioned her as a friend. This conversation felt strange and I didn't like it. Is this the favor you want? Because if it is, I can't help you. No, that's not the favor. I just wanted to know your plans. The favor comes if you really plan to get a divorce. I've already started the process. My lawyer wrote the papers today and will file them tomorrow. I want to send them to her at her job as soon as possible. I want to send a message to Sutton about what he did. Are you filing for divorce because of cheating? Yes. So here's the real favor. Stephanie looked like she was thinking hard. I waited for her to speak. She said, why don't you check if the grill is ready and we'll start dinner. Then we can continue talking. And also, we need more drinks. Both our bottles are empty. I set up the grill, then went back to help Stephanie prepare the food. Red potatoes, corn and asparagus with garlic for our grilled chops. I took the marinated chops outside to start cooking. Stephanie came out with two new bottles, handing me one. Finally, she spoke. I met with the district attorney today. We're going to charge all four real estate agencies. But we need a video to do that. If you file for divorce now and use the video for evidence, it will reveal what we have before we're ready. But that lawyers will get everything you have anyway. True, but we can control when they get it, which helps us a bit. So you're saying we should think about the many more than the few? Stephanie smiled. I laughed at the familiar quote. She said, The Wrath of Khan is one of the best Star Trek movies, but the TV series was better and Spock was great. I shook my head, 
flip the chops on the grill, then walk to the riverbank watching the water. I thought about what Stephanie said. She was asking a lot. After some time, I went back to the trailer. It looked like I'd be drinking more than usual today. Ready for another drink? Sure, I'll have a stout this time. What kind do you want? I'll drink whatever you're having. I washed the glasses from last night and filled them with Guinness. I checked on the potatoes and corn in the oven, then heated the asparagus before going outside again. I'd started gathering wood earlier, so I made a fire in a circle of rocks by the river where our chairs were. If I file for a no-fault divorce, I'll have to wait at least 30 days. During this time, everyone can leave without dealing with her cheating. If I wait for her to be convicted, it could take months or years to use it as grounds for divorce. And that's if she's convicted at all. You don't have to wait that long. The DA wants you to wait a week at most. We want to file search warrants against all four agencies at the same time for more evidence. You can file and serve her by Friday, but mid next week at the latest. Let me think about it before we eat. Fine. We decided to eat inside to avoid mosquitoes and flies. Our conversation was light and casual. I enjoyed how easy it felt between us. Basketball, soccer, volleyball, or softball? No, not softball. It's one of the other three, or maybe all three. Why rule out softball? She asked. You don't seem like you play softball, but you played one of the other three. What if I told you I was a cheerleader and didn't like aggressive sports? You'd be lying. You like team sports because of the competition, and you are not a cheerleader. She smiled. Basketball and soccer. We changed topics a few more times before finishing dinner and washing the dishes. After grabbing another bottle from the fridge, we went back outside and started a fire with some driftwood. Okay, I said. I'll call Kilgore tomorrow and tell him to wait until Friday afternoon to file the petition. We can serve Sarah the summons next week, she replied. That way, you can get search warrants before anyone can destroy important papers. I need to talk to you about something else, I said. You know Ted Kilgore is handling my divorce, right? I figured that out when you said you would call him tomorrow. I didn't know he does divorces, I confessed. I thought he only takes on criminal cases. He made his name doing divorces early in his career. It's been a while since he's handled them personally. I showed him the video, and he recognized the two men with Sarah on the boat. They're members of his country club. This was before I knew about the investigation. He assured me that I am his main client, and he has no ties with anyone in the video or the Sutton agency. But I don't know who else you're investigating, so I can't be sure. I trust him not to mess up your case, but it's up to you. I wanted you to know he's involved, I said. Yes, that's important to know. I'll need to talk to the DA about it. I don't want to know when you plan to execute the warrants, and considering my connection I shouldn't be too involved, she replied. I agree, I said. After a while our conversation quieted, and we just listened to the sounds of the night. It's getting late. You can stay again if you want. Are you going to be a scout again? I looked at her hoping she understood. Stephanie, I don't have much to offer other than my word. Despite everything Sarah did, I made a promise. Until the paperwork is filed and she is notified, I must keep my oath. If I don't, I'm no better than a traitor. I am so flattered that you're interested, and it took all my willpower not to pull you into the bedroom this afternoon. I hope we can spend more evenings together soon. But for tonight, I will be a scout. If you stay, you'll sleep in the bedroom and I'll be on the fold-out bed. I finished with a smile. She looked a bit let down, but her voice had a happy note. I hope you have another Pink Floyd shirt. I left the other one at home. I'm sure I can find something for you, I said. I made sure the fire was out and the coals were safe. Then I folded the chairs and put them under the table cover and we went inside to get ready for bed. What makes you think I wasn't a cheerleader? She asked. Were you? No, she replied. But why are you so sure I wasn't? You're happy to show off your legs and butt in shorts or yoga pants, but you wear baggy tops. Most cheerleaders I know like to show off their chests. And by the way, you're wearing my Pink Floyd shirt. Your breasts are amazing and you shouldn't hide them. She smiled, hiding her blush as she looked at her hands. The next morning, I woke up to the click of the bedroom door. 
Stephanie smiled as she walked past my bed to the bathroom. A few minutes later, she came out wearing my old black Led Zeppelin shirt. It's your turn to cook breakfast, she grinned, then went back to the bedroom. I liked the idea, so I got up, put on my gym shorts, and preheated the oven. I laid out some bacon on a rack and then did my morning routine in the bathroom. When I came back, Stephanie was at the sink, cracking eggs into a bowl. Too many cooks in the kitchen, I joked. I know, but you were taking too long, she said with a smile. After breakfast, she asked if I was still putting off filing for divorce. Yeah, I'll call Ted when I get to the office. I'll probably meet Sarah after work tonight. I want this over with as soon as possible. Maybe then I can check out the barn and think about turning it into a workshop. Are you thinking of staying here for a while? She asked. Yes, I replied. I think so. I like it here. Hunter said he might sell if I wanted to stay. Maybe I should talk to him about it. It suits you, she said, wiping the table. I smiled and put the last dishes away. I don't know how I'll feel tonight after talking to Sarah. Stephanie put the towel down and sat. I hope I didn't give the wrong impression. I'm not looking for a relationship. I like to have fun and I don't handle jealousy well. I know you've been watching me these last few days. When we eventually get together, I doubt we'll sleep much. I'm not seeking anything exclusive. You're focused on what's important and I like teasing you. Your strong standards show your good character and make you even more appealing. I think this land will attract many single women from Floyd and Bardo County soon. She laughed and said, just remember, I showed interest in you first. She winked. I smiled slyly back at her. Actually, you weren't the first to show interest in me. Really? Well, I need to try harder then. We laughed and finished cleaning. I'll be back shortly, Stephanie said as she walked out. She returned with a duffel bag and a garment bag. As I tucked my shirt into my pants, I asked, did you come prepared this time? Forget your nightwear. I like wearing a man's shirt to sleep, preferably a long-sleeved button-down shirt. Hint, hint. Got it? Fresh or already worn. I don't like hanger creases, she said, placing both bags on the bed. I laughed. You're trying to get me into trouble. If I wanted to get you into trouble, I'd do it right in front of you. Or at least leave the door open with these words. She closed the door. I opened the gate. She drove by talking through the open window. I won't go out tonight, but call me if you want to talk. Okay, I locked the gate behind me and headed to the office. I checked the duty board, picked the cases needing the most attention, and started my contacts and interviews. At 10 a.m., I called my lawyer and asked him to delay filing my divorce petition until Friday afternoon, explaining briefly. At lunch, I called Sarah and asked her to meet me at the city's waterfront park. I would bring takeout so we could talk about our marriage. She sounded calmer than I expected, and we agreed on a time and place to meet. It was a productive day overall. I closed one case as exceptionally clear, one as unfounded and issued arrest warrants in two others. I found a promising lead in a fifth case, but can't pursue it until the witness returns from vacation in nearly two weeks. At the end of the day, I discovered I had been assigned two new theft cases and one child abuse case. Being a crime detective is an endless cycle and people wonder why we don't see the problems in our own lives and marriages until it's too late. We have so many things and issues in our minds that it takes all our concentration. No one should worry about keeping an eye on their spouse. This is the one person everyone should trust without question. I left work two hours early, got soup, salad, and fresh bread from our back, and met Sarah on the boardwalk. We chose a clean picnic table. She looked sad but resigned but I wanted us to enjoy our meal before getting to the tough part of our talk. However, neither of us had much appetite. Our conversations were brief, not wanting to dig too deep. As I watched Sarah stir soup, I closed the lid on my half-full bowl and put it back in the bag. Sarah felt we were reaching the point and put her spoon down, looking past me. It's too late, isn't it? Yes, it is. How much do you know? A little. I know you've been lying and cheating on me for weeks, and you lost respect for me even before that. It was you by the lake, wasn't it? Yes, it was me. I knew it was you deep down. After I called you, I was sure. When I hung up, I told Paul that this was the first time you lied to me. I couldn't meet you Saturday night, so I stayed at the motel. 
I couldn't stay at Jessica's. I know it doesn't change anything, but I'm sorry. I'm not just sorry I got caught. I wish I hadn't made those decisions. In hindsight, they weren't worth it. Costs are often higher than we expect. If you saw what happened at the lake, you'll see there's more here than divorce. Detectives came with warrants, took account files, and interviewed everyone. So, something is up. How much time do I have? I don't know. I'm not involved except with you. All I can say is get a good lawyer. And if someone offers you an opportunity, it might be worth taking. Thanks. I might call Ted Kilgore. Ted can't help. He works for you now? Yes, he has documents. He might contact you next week. I want you to know you did nothing wrong. I was feeling bored and made some bad choices by listening to the wrong people. Deep down, I knew they were lying to me. That's why I was so upset when you showed me what Jessica was really like. But the truth is I was mad at myself, not at you. I knew you were right. I felt ashamed because I let myself get distracted and then took it out on you. You were a dreamer. And despite what I said last weekend, the world needs more people like you. I think that's why you didn't get bored like I did. I bet you never cheated on me during our marriage, right? Honestly, I've been tempted lately, but no, I never cheated on you. I never thought about it until last weekend. Well, call Ted and ask him to send me the papers. I'll sign them tonight, tomorrow, whenever. I'm really sorry. I love you. I'm just sorry I let things slip. You can have the house. I don't see myself living there anymore. I don't want it either. There are too many memories. Let's sell it and split the money. Okay, if you think this is best for you. Actually, I don't know how long my license will be valid, but I will get an appraisal and put it up for sale. How badly do you want to sell it? Just make sure someone can call it home. Whatever suits you. I said, I will contact Donovan and set up a Zoom meeting when he is available so we can tell him the news together. Hopefully it will be easier for him this way than hearing it from someone who doesn't really know what's going on. She nodded, looked at me with teary eyes, then turned and walked to her car and drove off. I picked up our trash and threw it in the dumpster before getting in my truck and heading home. Once home, I sat in a folding chair by the river. I called Stephanie and told her about my meeting with Sarah. She confirmed what Sarah said about the search warrants and agreed there's no point in delaying the divorce any longer. I don't know how much of her opinion was personal, but I called Ted after talking to Stephanie. My lawyer assured me he would file the papers on Wednesday morning and serve Sarah with the notice in the early afternoon. It was still light when I finished my calls. Sitting in that folding chair, watching the river flow became my favorite thing to do. I decided to make another call and open my contacts list on my phone. Hello, Mr. B, a small voice said. Well, hello to you too, Miss Katie. How are you today? I'm fine. Do you want to talk to my mom? She's here. Sure. It was nice talking to you, Miss Katie. Okay. Hi. You called earlier than I expected. I'm glad. Well, a lot has happened in the last few days and I thought it would be nice to talk when I'm less confused and frustrated. How are you? Everything is fine here. Nothing special is happening. What about you? Are you handling things? Yes. I moved on Sunday. My lawyer finished the paperwork and Sarah will get notice tomorrow afternoon. Does she know what's going on? Samantha asked. Yes, we met today and talked about everything. She agreed to sign the papers when she gets them and won't fight it. Of course, I won't try to get every penny out of it. I just want to start over and let her do the same. Besides, I think she has bigger problems than just the divorce. Understand? Can you talk about this? She asked. Maybe later this week when things are clearer. I'm not in the middle of this conflict right now. Well, I just wanted to check in, see if you disappeared after giving me the wrong number on Saturday. I was a bit confused and you could have told me anything then. I didn't even ask about you, not even your name. You should have offered it before I left and gave you the number myself. I wasn't in the best condition. I still don't know where you live. I usually stay between Rome, Taylorsville, and Cartersville, I said, laughing briefly in surprise. 
You'll give me a complex if you keep reacting like this every time I tell you something about myself, she said, amused. I'll explain everything someday. If I try now, you'll think I'm making things up. Okay, I'll accept it for now, but not for long. I heard her smile. Well, part of it is that we might be five miles apart. I'm renting a place on Harding Bridge Road by the river just below the boat launch. Oh, I know that place. There's a piece of land with an old barn. I go there because it's so beautiful and the surprises keep coming, I said gloomily. What? Samantha asked, confused. Why don't you come over? I think I know where you're talking about and I'll meet you there. Okay, see you in ten minutes. I stood by the open gate when a blackness on Juke slowed down and Samantha Kelly drove through the gate with wide eyes. She rolled down the window and looked surprised. This is it. This is the place I was talking about. There's a barn and there must have been a house. And this is where you live. Yes, I'm renting now, though I'm thinking about buying the land. I live in a camper through those trees. Follow me, I walked about 70 yards to the camper while Samantha drove slowly beside me. When we got there, Samantha helped Katie out of her car seat and we both shouted, stay away from the shore. When the little four-year-old girl ran around to the front of her mom's car, we both smiled and said at the same time, remember middle school. It made us laugh out loud. We sat down at a picnic table under the shade and talked.